just nine miles east of central London, Barking and Dagenham Giving are trying something that has never been done before. Their Grow Fund, England's first community-led investment fund, is backing community enterprises that will make a commercial and a social impact in the borough of Barking and Dagenham. Residents designed the fund and the investment policy. They also decided which local businesses to support. I'm back at the lovely Boathouse Studios to catch up with Carol Pluckrose. Carol is one of the business owners who benefited from grant funding and business development support. I'll be finding out more about her experience of the Growth Fund and what's happened since we last spoke in October 2023. I'm Elvi Matty. Welcome to this special edition of Nine Miles East, a podcast about a financial first. I'm Carol Pluckrose. I'm the Artistic Director and Chief Executive at the Boathouse Studios. We were one of the very fortunate early recipients of the Grow Fund, one of eight organisations that were granted £25,000. There was a lot of people applying for it, so we felt very fortunate to have that funding to develop our business. And now it's really great to be invited to chat about the journey over the past year and a half um, since the project began and to talk a little bit about some of the things that that's made possible for us. I set up the Bet House Studios with Steve Drury, who's the development director here at Roof, who owned the building, very much with the idea of creating a nerve centre for the community here in Barking and Dagenham. I've been and worked in Barking and Dagenham now for over 30 years, and I felt that a place where people could imagine and create artistic events, an incubator space for young artists, particularly emerging artists, and also a space as it evolved in terms of thinking about how to keep it sustainable would be a space where that same imaginative impetus could be transferred into people having events. One of the things I love most is when people walk through the space and can vision um, their event, whether it's a party, a wedding, um, a wake even. We recorded a, a podcast for BD Giving uh, must be about a year ago now, and um, a lot's happened since then. One of the things that was really exciting and a little bit nerve-wracking was going through the process of standing up and saying, actually, we would like to explore social investment to see what we could do. And one of the things that come out of the Grow Fund was actually a much more rigorous attention to our business plan. There's a lot of things in this building that we really wanted to improve make it feel more in line with the vision that we had for it. Um, and so since that last podcast, we actually went ahead, went through the process of applying for social investment and through the rigorous due diligence that you need to do when doing that. With great support from the team at BD Giving, um, we went for 75,000, which um, will transform, offer a, an acceleration of what we could potentially do with this building and, uh, you know, allow us to do some exciting developments. Now, in a chronically underfunded borough like Barking and Dagenham, £75,000 investment is huge. We deliberated for a while about how much social investment to go for. And we did a little bit of a blue sky exercise on if we could do whatever we want to do with this building, what would it be? Then we did a realistic exercise on it. I said, well, what do we think is pay repayable? Because this is repayable finance. Um, so we decided to go for an amount that would be manageable, but also ambitious. So we went for £75,000 to develop our kitchen, upgrade our toilets, get a brand new flooring into the studios, um, and to make it just even more appealing for people to use for their events and for the many artistic activities that we do here. What makes this fund so special? We found the Grow Fund an extremely innovative and interesting programme. It meant that we could work very much on the inside of the business and it lasted over a period of eight months. And during that time, we felt massively supported by the way in which the programme was structured. 
to enable us to get the bits of input and also to understand what we needed to do to get investment ready. I think none of us really fully understood what that meant at the beginning. What does investment ready, social investment ready mean? But with a kind of acute critical eye on budget projections, business planning, those sorts of elements during that period and being able to bring in expertise to do that really, I think, accelerated the potential of our growth as an organisation. Wow, sounds like lots of work, but was it worth it? I wanted to know what Carol valued the most about the Grow Fund programme. There was a significant amount of work involved in the period of time that we were involved in the Grow Fund, but it was the kind of work that was absolutely essential, so it was aligned fully with where we needed to be. So it, yes, although it felt like a lot of work, it felt like a lot of the right work to be doing. You know, sometimes when you're in a small social enterprise like us, you're, you're chasing your tail quite a bit to keep things going. You're under-resourced in terms of staff numbers, but have, being able to bring in someone who very specifically worked alongside us to do that was tremendously helpful. So yes, it is a lot of work and it should be because it's a serious piece of work but it's not, it wasn't exhaustive in, in the sense that it didn't take away either from progressing the business as we needed to. One of the most valuable things that I personally got from Grow Fund was a sense of community and a cohort of people going through a similar process. Often as businesses, you don't get to talk directly with you know someone else about how do you manage it when you get a dip in your cash flow how do you deal with you know working ridiculous hours because you've got a big project to deliver and just that sort of peer dialogue was really 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 good i enjoyed that and also the seriousness with which the funder of that project bd giving actually engaged with us and gave external perspective that we we just don't normally get i valued that hugely Carol tells us what the turning point was when she decided to take on an investment. So the turning point for us in deciding that we would go for the social investment was very much a process of discussion with our board about the different kinds of income streams and the viability of the long-term business plan that we had. One of the things that we did as part of the business planning was to make sure that we had a really 360 approach to what was happening, what is happening um, at an economic level. Globally, you know, we know that we've all been through a pretty horrendous cost of living challenge. We needed to know what the trends are, especially around things like weddings, that sort of thing. So we did a lot of research to ensure that we knew that there is actually a really growing market for the, for the offers that we have here. We were very aware that we were very lucky to be one of the 10 organisations that got the funding. I believe there were something like 100 applications at the time. So we were completely thrilled to get that funding. It was fantastic for us. It gave us a kind of visibility within the landscape as well, along with the other organisations. And BD Giving were very attentive to how that experience should be for us as an organisation along with everyone else. They wanted to know exactly how it was working and were there at the end of the phone. It felt very much more like a kind of equal partnership and they brought in Impact Hub to help to be really specific about areas of business development. But it was a fabulous experience and actually the ongoing one for us. So one of the things that I really, and we as an organisation, really appreciated about the Grow Fund was that we effectively were given a wraparound programme and pack that supported us with a number of different elements in it. So obviously there was a grant, 25,000, so that was fantastic in itself, and it was not project-driven, so that's also very helpful because so often in organisations that get grant funding, it's very project-driven. It was lovely to have some unrestricted funding that we could say what we wanted to spend that on. Then we had practical support from Impact Hub, who were the consultants that Barking and Dagenham Giving brought in to help us, and we had regular meetings with them and inputs on um, debt on different models of social investment with examples too of other organisations who'd nationally had social investment and we also had a mentor who worked with us very directly and specifically on the work that we do. The team at BD Giving are committed to sharing power with residents and collaborating to strengthen the borough. So what was it like working with them towards a financial investment? 
the social investment process was really interesting and very, very different from going to a bank to get a loan. And first of all, we were quite reticent about debt. Um, we've never even had an overdraft as an organisation. So we were a little bit nervous and a lot of concerns were raised at a board level and across the piece about, well, what does that exactly mean? And then um, I did quite a bit of reading around good finance and looking at the different sorts of social investment models and exploring, which we also did with our mentor, the difference between what is effectively divided as good debt and bad debt, with bad debt very much being money that you just spend on consumables, where good debt is things like mortgages, student loans, business investment loans of this, like social investment, which is going to accelerate your ability to then bring in a greater return on the on the, on the the project or the activity that you're going to do. So, that, so we decided as a board that we felt cautiously, but also optimistic that we could take this on and it would actually deliver on the outcomes that we set in our business plan, which is very much about increasing opportunity. And I'll give you a very specific example of that. One of the things that we wanted to do was to register our space as a wedding venue, an approved premises. And there are only, I think we'll be, we will be the sixth in London Borough, Barking and Dagenham, so that we can actually do um, legal weddings at the studio. So someone can have their legal wedding and their ceremony, uh, their party, their reception in the building on the same day. And that's something that people have asked us about before. So we were able to just say, OK, well, it's worth investing that small amount of money, actually, from the bigger investment. We can, with impunity, we can just put that out there and pay for it and we can get going. And that will already move the marketing further forward as well, because it won't just be us that are marketing ourselves. It will also be the registrar office that will be telling people about the studios as somewhere for a wedding. When the Grow Fund programme ended, we were really not quite ready to immediately jump in with a, with a proposal or an expression of interest for social investment. We needed to reflect on the learning and also to start to implement the business plan that we'd worked on and to really explore it with our board because there was definitely reticence. There's definitely reticence around, you know, a, a, a small organisation taking on this kind of repayable finance. However, with the research, with talking to people, the whole team were involved. We had a, a half-day team event where we explained it and shared it with them. And then we also had that same process with our board. And we put papers to our own board and then it was agreed at our board meeting that we should take the next step. As a local business owner, I was keen to understand the impact of the investment on Carol's business. The investment from BD Giving honestly really felt much more like a partnership than one might imagine with most funders. Very much a kind of adult to adult relationship, whereas quite often with funders, it very much feels quite parental. And because BD Giving know the area as well as we do, there's a sense that we know our community and knowing our community means that people are asking the right questions of us and also challenging us to consider those things. One of the things that's really been very refreshing about working with Barking and Dagenham Giving is it's felt different from other funders who often feel very quite arm's length. There's been a sense that we know the people behind the funding in a very real way and they have expressed their interest in our success too and we all work in the same borough. So that sense of partnership and support and accountability, of course, which is a fundamental part of this, is hugely encouraging and confidence building. One of the things that's really powerful about now having that investment in our bank account is a sense of ability to plan very carefully with it to implement the steps that we want to put in place in terms of the development of the, of, of the business, including physical things that we're changing and also things like our marketing. And it's great to have the money to match the ambition and the vision. And so it's very exciting. And those changes mean that we feel we have a security and a sense of agency that allows us to move forward very progressively. Part of the process of signing all the documents and having signed off by BD Giving Board and by our own board was what the payment terms would be 
on the repayable finance. We have an agreement which is over five years, 5%, and the amount of interest is around 9,500. That's then amortized across that five years, and our repayments are just over £1,400 a month, which is extremely competitive. Um, you, very difficult to get that kind of deal. A, for a, a, a CIC like we are, in any kind of commercial setting, probably. The impact of the investment so far, and it's still very much early days, is a building of confidence in the team and a sense of excitement about potential growth. So things like, I've already mentioned, becoming an approved premises for weddings, having new flooring, and also the leverage. I think that's also terribly important that comes with this social investment. The ability to apply for other funds and using the social investment as leverage. For example, our relationship with Roof, the owners of the building, because they now see that we have been successful in social investment, that also means that their investment in supporting the enterprise becomes even more robust. BD Giving are preparing for a second round of the Growth Fund. So I asked Carol what her ambitions are for the next generation of Barking and Dagenham's entrepreneurs. With respect to a new Growth Fund programme, there's a lot of learning to take forward, I suspect, for BD Giving because ours was the first cohort. I think there's a real opportunity to build on the infrastructure and the climate that we operate with in Barking and Dagenham. And it's almost like the alumni of the cohort could be very actively involved in supporting new arrivers into the programme. And also, I think about debunking concepts about this, what social investment is like, um, and expanding people's visions, expanding people's belief in what's possible by demonstrating. There's a lot of creative and intellectual capital in the borough. There's a rich, rich vein of creative entrepreneurial spirit. Um, and it would be really great to see that galvanized more in the future of the Grow Fund. As well as a long-term vision for the Boathouse, we really want people to know about what's on offer here and to feel comfortable in coming and chatting to us. Um, because if we can make something possible, we'll go to the ends of the earth to do it. I feel really, really passionate about kindness, generosity and creativity and co-creating. So if you want a party and you want to do it in a particular different kind of a way, talk to us about it. And if we can make it happen, we will. Because one of the main values that we have here is hospitality and we want it to feel like a home from home. So you come here and you feel comfortable and you feel like oh, I can do whatever, you know, we can make something happen that's really special. So we're kind of yes and culture um, and we get it wrong sometimes, but more often than not, we get it right. And so that's what we really want people to come to us with ideas and we get some wonderful suggestions which help us to keep thinking creatively and out of the box. My vision for the Boathouse future is that it allows people to have ideas and make them happen, whether that's a small event or a big artistic endeavour, and that people will come to see the space as a really beautiful destination that will be really well known across Barking and Dagenham and further afield in East London. There's a dearth of good spaces currently for this kind of activity and we're really thrilled and excited to see that grow over the next 10 years. We live in an area that is full of new build, new development, and an awful lot of people live in one or two bedroom flats. And having somewhere local that they can use to do whatever kind of celebration event is something that's really special. And there's definitely a lack of spaces that can allow that in the borough. So we very much see ourselves as central to the development of people's well-being and experience here in Barking and Dagenham. This is a Barking and Dagenham Giving podcast brought to you by Julian Wharton at Bison Studios and Louise Kavanagh at Purposeful Marketing with thanks to Cass Denton and Chris Mitchell for the previous episodes.